<laughs> Not moving. There it goes. Oh no. Hello everybody. How's it going, folks? We are live. We are live. We are live. Oh my god. <laughs> that is sexy. Oh, wow, Lock. That is so this sexy. Is, this is my Christmas hat. Yeah. You that Fu made for me. It's excellent. That's awesome. Um she told I guess me I they said everybody's really low. Hold on. You mean, that's why we're doing this. We actually just went live to uh, make sure the volume levels and everything are good. Open the volume mixer. Okay, everything turned all the way up. Speak. Hello. Speak. No. <laughs> that's the sound. You're not my real dad. Sit. My Roll real over. Dad, my real dad's English. Mm. And he looks like Bob Hoskins. Does he now? Oh, wow. He does, yeah. Did he frame like Roger Bob Rabbit? And Phil Collins. No. Okay, everyone says it seems fine. They said put that in your beard. It sort of is. <laughs> they say maybe wear it in the back. <laughs> All right. Wear it like this. Yeah, Tobrand is red nose. He gets teased a lot. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, and Legendary Neurotoxin only has one hat. He wears that out all the time. No, actually, I only wear it for this stream, and that's it. Otherwise, it goes in its little plastic package that it came in. Mm, cool. All right, well, let's uh, we'll actually start the show. I guess the music sounds good, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> what? It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Oh, how it fits, but Geek Domo. Like, yeah, almost wants you to wear Lock, like, an eye patch. Legendary Neurotoxin, and Tobrin. I swear I'm going to fix it. I got some stuff in the works. We're going to have lasers and smoke. That intro is going to be great. Yeah, Trendane is not here tonight. He's having an operation. And, uh, yeah. He's having his elbows replaced with my boobs. Mm. <laughs> L boobs. L boobs. They love your face. They love your face, Tobran. Yay. So, uh, yeah. Welcome, everybody, to EverQuest Next Into the Portal and EverQuest Next Discussion. Here we are. Uh, I, Geek Domo, am <laughs> barely hanging in there. Yes. Uh, I have a wicked, wicked <laughs> migraine, and I don't know why they're laughing. Maybe it's our hats. Just your mastery of the English language is <laughs> mine. Or is what I say. What? What? Mm. Let's do the show. Okay, we're back to doing the show. Anyway, so my head is splitting open right now. I'm having a hard time not uh, just falling over dead. If I do, then you'll know why. Yay. Yay. Hold up. So, okay, let's, uh, what, what's going on, guys? Tell me about, uh, Locke, you have a big announcement to make about uh, um, the show out in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking about SOE Live, and she's in Vegas. And uh, what would you like to would you like to say anything about it or not? I don't know. Do you think do you think something important's happening? All right. For for those for those watching that are interested, uh, you may you may know that I'm I'm involved with with a lady human um, called Fulala, uh, who's watching right now. Hey, Fu. And hey, we we have decided it would be the best thing for everyone if if we got married um, at some time at the end of July. You're Yay. all invited. You can find us. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Cheers. I'm, I'm, I'm utterly thrilled. And we will be, as part of our, our honeymoon celebrations of our, of our nuptials, we will be we'll be attending SOE Live in Las Vegas. So hopefully I will see at least some of you there. I know, I know, Reese will be, I know uh, <laughs> Neurotoxin will be there. And, uh, Tobrin will hopefully be my... <laughs> my SOE son. Oh, <laughs> <for> yeah. 
this this will be my masterpiece, my my video diary of SOE Live. <laughs> yes, they're getting married in Vegas. It will be it will be my Citizen Kane. Mm, you're gonna get married by Elvis in Vegas. <laughs> then Locke's gonna lose all of his gold rolling at the craps table. Uh oh. Oh, here it oh. comes. <laughs> hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you just screwed up all the cameras. You're welcome. <laughs> Hold on, hey, we're we're live, so give me one second, everybody. I don't, I don't care. All right, uh, well, I was I was running back so fast, and I had to go pee when I got back to the house, and I didn't even have time to lick my hands afterwards. It was horrible. I just, mm. <sighs> mom, get off the stream. <laughs> Hold on, let me fix <laughs> I told it. Here. You, I've told you so many times. You guys can chat while I'm fixing this. Hold on. Yeah, so SOE Live, um, it's a lot of fun. I went last year, I went this year. I was actually a panelist both times, which is also a lot of fun. Um, but definitely check it out. You get to you know see a lot of new stuff, get a lot of swag, shirts, posters, all sorts of other stuff. You can buy exclusive stuff that you really can't buy anywhere else, or really at any other time. Um, and most of the time, you're going to be seeing devs and community people and folks that work at SOE everywhere. It's awesome. You get to drink with them. There's even a dev brunch you can get in on where you can sit down with the, the devs of whatever game you want, hang out, and eat breakfast or brunch or whatever meal it is for you by that point. Can I sit and talk with the devs for Vanguard? Yeah. Oh. Hell yeah. They're going to be there. I don't think there are panels. any. Is it really? I was joking about that. I was... <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure they're still making content for it. Locke, are you frozen? I don't. I don't feel frozen. Oh, he is. <laughs> he is. <laughs> this is just awesome. I'm. I'm a catalyst. I make things happen. Lock, this you're, is. You're frozen, Lock. Uh, in a, in some, a very this nice is some smile. Serious though. tech issues, boss. This is. Uh, it's. A, it was a nice smile, anyway. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, the uh, tech issues are working out. Do we want to uh, move on to the next topic? Or does anyone else have anything to say on SOE Live? Uh, no. SOE there Live, we go. come on down. Coming down. Oh, yeah. So SOE Live is coming up next year in Vegas, baby. I'm hoping to actually meet up with these guys when I go to PAX East in April. All right. I'm hoping that I can meet them there because I can't go to Vegas. It just ain't gonna happen. But I can go to. I'm going to uh, Boston in April. Cool. Boston. Boston. I'm gonna have a tea party and everything. <laughs> just for <laughs> you Brits, racist. in the honor of you guys. <laughs> gonna have a tea party. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, any devs here tonight? I've seen anyone. That's all you care about. You don't even want to talk to us anymore. Just, oh, so, anything? from what I understand, Wednesday was the marketing holiday party, and today is the dev team holiday party. Oh, they're all drunk, man. Yeah, <laughs> or in the process of getting there. Yeah, we but, drink coffee in yeah. Boston. I, I think that's what's uh, going on at EA right now. I think everybody's getting drunk. <laughs> mm. I used to work for Sony, and they had no problem giving out lots and lots of liquor for free. I don't know what that deal is with them. So are they hiring at the moment, or what? <laughs> I don't know, but Omid Only was... Only for senior stuff. You know, Omid is going to be getting a uh, Trendana job. All the jobs. All the jobs. All, jobs. All the jobs belong to Trendane. Every job. Yeah. Okay, that's all I want out of SOE Live. I just want to... You just want to get married. I just want to find, yeah. find Omid and just blank him. That's all I want. <laughs> I want to be walking past and I want him to recognize me and like go to say hello and I'll just sort of look at him and like look like I don't even recognize him. Just yeah. carry on walking. Yeah, yeah. The, only, re the only reason I'm going. That's all I want. That'd be fun. <laughs> the only time I saw Omid at uh, SOE Live was after the EQ Next announcement uh, keynote thing and he had a drink in his hand. I think I might have seen him one other time with a drink in his hand, but that's it. I don't think he's bunch visible of alcoholics in, at Sony. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, I, I don't think Omid's visible in real life unless he's actually got a drink in his hand. Otherwise, he's just invisible. Sirol asked, "Why are you in low res?" Locke is always low res. He actually exists in a different dimension, and so his resolution is a little lower than ours, but it's a little higher in the other one. He's actually 4K in the other dimension. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it it's weird though. Like a few generations ago, he, he was all like his family's all 8-bit and stuff. So this is like serious mm-hmm. upgrade from then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get on with the topics. <laughs> Because my head is splitting open right now. my I, I, Like, my brains are leaking out my ears or something. So, Okay, so first big announcement, the alpha announcement. Yay. 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 So It's not an announcement. It's not. It's more of a present. What, what would you call it? They, basically, they said that they were going to open up alpha in February. And we all said, yeah, right. They're not going to do that. They're going to give it to us in December. <laughs> and then they said, no, we're going to give it to the end of January, which is great. I'm digging that they're giving it to us at the end of January. I mean, it's better than nothing at all. Well, I hope they said it was a, a tweet from Mr. Smedley himself. Mm-hmm. It said it should. We should have it in the second half of January, which, you know, it's not a promise. Or but soon. If, it, if, it's, if, it's, if he's tweeting it, it's, it's, a, it's a probably for sure. It's a definitely maybe. Well, you know, they wouldn't say it. Yeah, Smedley likes to announce dates that his team can't meet. That's from Dragon Monk. Oh, by the way, everybody, in the audience, if you'd like to ask a question of us that we can try to attempt to answer, uh, just type in question in brackets, and uh, you can do question in brackets, then the question itself, then question at the end if you want to get really fancy, or you can just do it like a normal thing. Yeah, just like, just like Legendary Neurotoxin wrote. And then uh, if you do that, every time a, a question comes up, I will break a glass bulb. <laughs> you must have a lot of glass bulbs around. I do. You can't, just can't hear it, but um, Twitch up at the top near the logo, if you have better Twitch, there's glass bulbs up there. And I was streaming today, and I kept hearing glass breaking. I'm playing DayZ, so I'm thinking somebody's going to be shooting me any second now. I'm like, you know, looking around, thinking that somebody's going to jump out and kill me, and it wasn't that at all. It was the me moving my mouse over these glass bulbs. Yeah, I already broke all mine. So I'm going to do that every time a question comes up. And here comes a bunch of questions. Great. Okay. Uh, can everyone... Uh, well, this question <clears throat> needs to be answered right now because it, we can't let this one sit. What does Santa have in his sex for you all? <laughs> That's just... <laughs> hmm. I think I think Trendy should answer this. Sweaty. Sweaty ice cream. Sweaties. Sweaty balls. Ice cream. <laughs> I'm selling uh, Krampus's coal back to him for next year. <laughs> Tobran, his nose is all red, not because he colored it that way. He did a bunch of coke right before the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. So. Oh, God. Mm, we're in rare form tonight, aren't we? This, yep. is, this is going well. This is definitely this is definitely our most professional our most professional quality caster. community content. Mm-hmm. We are yeah, here for the community, yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, here he goes, well, that's, Omid. That's shows. why I'm here. Oh, it's, come on, Omid. It's, it's, it's like the buffet. Every time he shows up, it goes to shit. Yeah, it's the true. only the only thing you regret, Omid, is that you didn't show up and see you the first fifteen minutes, <laughs> and then makes you feel so guilt ridden that you wish you were dead I understand man it's all good okay. to just hang out and, and have a good time Omid <laughs> real, real I, quick. Love, I love the thought of him being in the office just going oh do I have to watch it and <laughs> George's just there like, pushing him back into <laughs> like, oh I want to go home it's Friday it's like no you have to do it awkward bit of information he came over and watched my Star Citizen podcast the other day and it was just so weird because it just don't see t- uh, Omid in the this sort of Star Citizen light, and I was like, uh, "Should I start talking about EverQuest next now, or should I?" You know, <laughs> hmm. he was drinking oh, scotch with. Well. Hey Dex. Uh, yes, the drinking game is: every time there's a question, you must take a drink. Yeah. Why? Because we get more questions that way. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a question. Oh, well, hold on, that question. Oh. All right, Trendane. No, it needs to be in the brackets. Yes, it has to be in brackets. So ask that question in brackets, Trendane. Um, would you please, uh, everybody in uh, the chat in this particular show has not heard about your new computer. Could you give everybody a quick rundown on, on the new PC? I could. Please. Oh, you mean right now? Yes, please. I see. Okay. Before we move on to the next topic. Um, well, it's uh, it's doing quite well. It's uh, I-, I thought that it was starting to make noise the other day because I was starting to hear you know, a hum coming from 
from that that area and then i realized that it was actually the that that one external that ide drive because there's no ide plugs on the motherboard so i had to hook up this adapter and plug it into the usb thing and it was the drive that was humming yeah. it wasn't wasn't my my computer so um when I, I was like oh god now it's starting to make noise and everything and then i unplugged that i was like oh no it's i mean it's so quiet when i lean over the machine i can't hear it because when I first powered it up, I didn't think it was on. Right. So I pushed the button and the LED turned red. And I was like, oh, crap, something's wrong. I was like, I don't hear anything. The LED is red. What the hell? And then I, my, my monitor came up. It's like starting windows. I'm like, my God, that was fast. <laughs> I was like, I was going to be waiting another three minutes before I was going to be able to open Chrome. What the hell? Right, right, right. Well, it's because and the squirrels so. in the other one were much noisier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and their uh, little wheel that they used to run around on. Well, I ran out of that the 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 that that really thin oil you use on airplane engines. WD I, I, I ran yeah no 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 really thin really low viscosity and I ran out of that and so their wheel started squeaking a lot. Mm. But that's okay. When I got the new machine, I just ate them. So yes, little squirrel sandwiches. All right, so let's move on to our next topic. Thank you, Trendane, for the update. Um, and yeah, his new computer is humming right along. And if you notice, Trendane is in a higher resolution than Locke at this point. And I was just like, what? It's just a fact for all you, all you resolution fans out there mm -hmm. in internet land. <laughs> and, and I don't think you can see my hat very well, so hang on just a second. Your, your hat is a bit erect. Yeah, oh, it gets better. Hang on. Mm. Does this got kind of spin around? Oh, wow! Oh, nice. It's cool. It's one of those, um, what's the girl from The Grinch? It's kind of, uh, Susie Who? Susie, Susie who. who? It's a I Susie Who hat. It's, it's my Susian Christmas hat. Yeah. <laughs> Omid says, that's good. I'd rather see Locke in lower resolution. Pervert. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So our next topic of discussion is... Uh, the <laughs> next topic of discussion. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry. For discussion. I told you I got a wicked headache. Don't beat me up over my mispronunciations of your English language. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. What? It just it doesn't matter. Sorry. Oh, well then stop laughing at me every time I speak. <coughs> You're making me self-conscious and stuff. Either. Okay. The Stars of Home short story. So I have not read it, but Tobrin says he's read it and put it into his database. Yes. So would you like to tell us a little bit about the Stars of Home short story? Um... It's a good book, really short though, like 20 pages, yeah, mm -hmm. I believe, yeah. It's only, really I think, short. about 15 of content. Wow, okay, so really short story. Um, involves the story of a dwarven thief who goes out and literally changes the world around him. It's pretty cool. Ending is really brutal, not okay. gonna lie, brutal ending, but uh, overall it's a pretty good story. But it leaves it on a bit of a cliffhanger as well. Does he use the tools from Landmark to change the world around him? No. No. No? <laughs> hmm. Can't confirm. No. You can confirm. Okay, it's confirmed. He does not use the landmark tools to change the world around him. I was just wondering. Uh, but for those of you who, who, who don't speak Scottish, he said brutal and not brittle. Just. <laughs> yeah, peanut brittle. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very peanut brittle ending. He's, every time he laughs, too, you see his head goes down, he's snorting some more coke. Yeah. That's why his nose is so bright red. Yeah, it's definitely um, it, it's worth checking out reading. It, it's not a very long read, and the pages are actually really small too. So people who don't like giant pages, it's not like <laughs> the page is like a four by, by five card. Yeah, and it's it's, it's it's forty point it's type. Teeny. It's so, so teeny tiny. <laughs> like it, you'll you'll read it in like fifteen minutes. It's a short one, nice. but it's definitely like gives a. Uh, kind of an indication of the scope and scale of magnitude of the kind of events that could happen and you know how suddenly they can happen that it goes from kind of everyday life from the beginning to well I'm not going to reveal it by the end but it gets it gets wild cool um what else go ahead the uh well I thought anyone Trendy else was say, want to say anything yeah, I thought Trendy was going to say something but okay I mm, I was no? thinking of the 1960s Batman, Mr. Freeze. Why is the man the why? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, your new nickname is Meth Bear, Tobran. Meth Bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's go, we're going off. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> We're in La La Land today. All right. So, the uh, video about the day night response. Mm -hmm. that we, one's... Have, we have an answer. <clears throat> they said it was. It just. It is going to be two hours. They've made a decision, and that's it. Whether you like it or not, all you people out there, and it's, it's two hours. Let me yeah. ask. Go ahead, Trendy. Go. go ahead. I, I was going to say, what, what is it? Thirty-six minutes. Uh, 70, 72 minutes, I thought, was what they... Overall, uh, but 36 and 36 was what Omid mm -hmm. said in the in the video. Yeah. Um, and so I'm like, why why that number? Does that round out to something in a bigger... Well, maybe it, it fits into a 24-hour day of, of real that's time. That's the only thing I think evenly. of, but my, my math skills are... So, I, I don't know how many... How many I'm, times does 36 fit into a 24-hour day? I don't know. Well, I was asking the other guys <laughs> oh, who might be better uh, at math. Okay, all right. Well, it's like half an hour and a and a tenth of an hour, isn't it? So I guess it's. Oh, now you're <coughs> making two math problems out of one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask. Yeah. Let me ask Omid. Let me ask Omid something then. Uh, Omid, uh, if you can verify this in the chat, uh, I'm playing a lot of DayZ, and uh, it's a 24-hour clock on DayZ, and it takes about I think eight hours to go from full day to full night, and then back around again. So 16 hours total, I think. 20 hours per day, I forget. Anyway. But at nighttime, in in Daisy, you can take the slider and you can slide the gamma all the way up, and you can slide the brightness all the way up. And when you do that, it turns everything black and white. But I can see just like it's daytime, but it's completely black and white. Is that possible to do in EverQuest Next, or is there a way that you sort of can get around that nighttime thing where it's instead soon? Of, oh, you know, that's not the answer. We're no, I'm just asking if there's a, if the if the gamma slider negates. He says, night, "Oh God, no." Well, I don't I know don't, if that's for that. I was still in the middle of talking when he said that. Yeah. Well, I suppose um, even if they took a gamma slider out of the actual game, you could still do it on the monitor or you could do it with third-party programs. So they'd have to design around it eventually, which is another reason why I think, you know, when we <gasps> were, <talking> about, <laughs> were talking about nighttime before, they did say that it's not going to be it's not going to be pitch black. You're going to be able to sort of find your way around, which I guess, like a you know, if you play night. a game like Daisy, when it's, when it's dark, it's, you know, it's just blackness. Like if you're out in the middle of the woods without a light source, mm -hmm. you know, you can't really see it all. Um, but I think, you know, if they, if they make it so you can at least kind of navigate yourself, then that shouldn't be too much of an issue. It'll just make you... Just make has literally no idea. Oh, that's what he says, yeah. I mean, the other thing to think about with it is the further away you are from cities and sources of light, the less uh, light pollution you're getting, so the more kind of atmospheric light you're getting from, you know, stars and moons and such. So that, that could also be a factor is you're going to have maybe like an ambient 5-10% illumination or something at most that is going to be a constant everywhere plus or minus any you know low light racial ability but then it'd be a matter of um as you use light sources you might potentially be compromising some some ability to see at some ranges but being able to see really well close up or i'm not sure necessarily how it would uh work out but uh definitely i can see how they could give maybe not necessarily an advantage but some sort of default you can at least see like slightly in front of you and you can see like where the horizon line is I mean, even without a light source that i imagine that the gamma sliders will help but the goal is not to have a night and day be night and day be interesting but not punishing uh, in okay. eq1 you guys in 99 are finding this and, and both of you are humans right are you you're you're uh, wood elves no, no, humans. are you both humans so at night humans in in, in the first ever quest can see nothing like nothing at all. It's pitch black, and they, maybe you, that's why they can't find a goddamn tree. That could be. Something like that. <laughs> uh, and so I'm glad to see that at least in this game you'll be able to see a little bit. But I would like to see the racials. I would like to see the dark elves be able to see sort of that ultraviolet look that they used to be able to see in a little bit. I mean, even if it's just a tiny little bit of that at night, so you can see just a tiniest bit better. I think would be cool. But landmark, remember, is only humans as far as we know for right now. So any of the other kind of racial things are kind of out the window until that actually comes out anyway. When Omid, it's the Morgard, the Morgard. We should talk to him about the story. Which these are we talking about? I don't know. All of them. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't either. <laughs> well, in about... 15 seconds, he'll catch up with us. And, well. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's, let's sit here and wait patiently. 
<laughs> one one thing I am wondering about is uh, how destructible you know trees will be if you can just light them on fire and use them as giant torches. An interesting point. We try that. It would work. Do we have to fill the tree with dwarves and a hobbit and a wizard first, or yes. do we just light them? And the orcs um, must be below them. Either way. Okay. okay. I suppose it would work. Oh, so uh, Morgard is the official uh, lore guru. Oh, of course, yeah. Sorry, I, I thought it was something in EverQuest. Oh, mm. awesome. I so I can, I can ask something that I want to know. How does magic actually work? Is it like things being leaked in from some other plane? Is it gift from the gods? Is it like metachlorians or something? Please How no metachlorians. Uh, no. <laughs> metachlorians <laughs> destroyed. It's like it's like Highlander. Remember the first Highlander? You know, it could have been a human that became immortal. And then it's no, they're from the planet Zeit, which is German for time and uh, just, you know, it just ruined the entire story. Metachlorians killed Star Wars. <laughs> That's all I'm having. I think, to say I like think a lot of things in that in that film killed. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, like or hate the stories, it's his fault. Oh, so Morgard is the writer of these stories. I didn't realize we had three devs here tonight. When he <laughs> first, when Omid first said, you know, it's Morgard. I didn't read it as Morgard. I read it as Moongard, oh. and I thought I thought he was going to be talking about uh, Pornshire in Wow. Mm. And I was like, what kind of stories are we writing now? Because I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're reaching all age levels. I think they age groups. Blade. What is happening tonight? Everyone's gone insane. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> it's it's a full moon. It's the end of the week. Uh, it's not, Christmas oh starts <laughs> like in two or three days. Uh, and so it's just everybody's like losing their mind. Okay. So Morgard says, we have an answer to that, but I can't tell you right now because a lot depends upon the information. Ah. Uh, okay. All I right. So I'm, thanks for coming, Morgard, to our show. You're going to be disappointed like the rest of us. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, unless you like watching, you know, uh, Scottish guys disappear out of frame like every fifteen seconds because we got tons of that. Yeah, <laughs> to come yeah, back up with a red thing. nose. Sorry. You got to rub your teeth a few times too and make like that's, noises. That's what the handlers are for. Pulling back up. And, <laughs> no, get up here. Yeah, uh, that was kind of a tease, Morgar. Okay, <sighs> so let's uh, move on to our next topic, number three. Item composition in history. So uh, this is a thesis or a treatise, treatises on uh, item composition history by our none other than Mr. Legendary Neurotoxin. So I will let him take the floor. Yeah, this is um, a little bit more of an abstract concept, and I say that because it doesn't get into too much of the finite specifics. Just because you know we haven't been exposed to what's exactly going to be in EverQuest next, so. It's really hard to quantify or you know put values to everything. Kind of the same uh, with the uh, the brewing document that I couldn't really get into too much material detail because I'd just be making stuff up the whole time. But the uh, item composition history is basically um, looking at two major factors about equipment and how they could um, really increase kind of the character of the equipment itself and give each item its own kind of personality and place in the world. So composition refers to both the materials that go into it, the composition of the uh, the, the blade itself and the alloys used, how the uh, hilt is designed and balanced, the materials used, and then you know any other um, you know magic gems or enchantments or you know any sort of stuff like that. Um, and then there's the um, the structural, which is how it's actually designed. Um, in the um, the the sorry the um, how the equipment is actually designed, how it functions, how the um, the 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 design and shape and everything works for the person who's using it. So one example I give is if you've got like a metal cooking pot with a chin strap, sure it might you know protect your skull from getting smashed if you get hit by a sword or an arrow or something, but it's still gonna ring your bell. It's still gonna basically you know you're gonna have a migraine, possibly a concussion. Um, so that compared to like a, uh, I think it's a bassinet, bassinet, the uh, helm that kind of comes to a point in the back that actually is acoustically designed. So when you get hit, all the sound is up here and it's not here in your head. Um, so that's on the, um, the, the, 
structural and material composition side. Now on the history side, that's more what the actual item has been through, how many you know, how many times it's killed a certain type of creature, who's ever worked on it, the different crafters, different people who have owned it. Um, you know, parts that might have been swapped out from other items, like a, a hilt and a blade from two different things put together. And, you know, the different things that it's been through kind of build up not only a set of influences that could then be used to increase the potential of the item, but it also, um, um, you know, there, there's the chance that things that are involved with major events like a particular rallying call might have extra uh, bonuses or benefits related to them. Or, you know, for example, if you've got some cloak that only captains during a specific rally and call would wear, then enemies who see it, they'll, they'll you know, send their assassins after you, and you'll have to fight more things just because you have this item with history. So, the, uh, the combination of both the material and component side as well as history and who's actually had a background with the item and, you know, potentially how much more powerful it can be magically enchanted based on all of that or otherwise improved is is more or less the uh, the the point of that document so it uh, didn't really get a whole lot of discussion so definitely um, do uh, do check it out read it and, and post something about it and I've already got the next uh, document underway which is about ancestral lineage and how that can play into either character creation or gameplay in general uh, do you have a link to the document? Yeah, I'll let me get for it. I can't find it. Okay, if you could post that. Now, people in the chat were saying, well, wait a second. He writes these very, very detailed documents that have extremely minute details that will never make it into the game. And while that might be the truth for a lot of the stuff that he's writing about, certain parts might. You never know. They, he might come up with an idea where the devs sit down and look at his document and go, you know what? That's not a bad idea. We might be able to implement that. And uh, so, you know... I support I support Mr. Neurotoxin in all of his long rambling posts because there's good stuff in there and I recommend you guys read them. And uh, yes, yeah, so Omid and everybody else who might have missed earlier, uh, Locke is now off the market. He is officially engaged. He's getting married at SOE Live by Omid. Will officiate the event. He's going to be standing right next to Elvis. I don't want Omid within 50 feet of me. Mm. <laughs> Playing, oh yeah, playing yeah, landmark. The, having the necessary legal work done before I attend the event. Um. It's too bad you couldn't have proposed to uh, Fu in game because I proposed to my wife in game. So, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you could have proposed to Fu in game. Maybe, maybe I'll do it anyway, just for the hell of it. Mm. Oh, Cyril <laughs> said uh, she had a sister or had a sister for you, so. It's you're gonna be sitting next to you're gonna be sitting next to the band that did that damn what does the fox say song that that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what song that is, but people talk about it all the time. Yeah, it's an internet thing from the yeah, internet. It's one of the internet words and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We we uh, where is the foo? Everyone wants to see the foo. The foo's upstairs. She's watching. She's in the. Oh, she's actually yeah. in the chat. Chat roll. She's probably. <laughs> she's probably. Uh, playing Pokemon or something. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> but we will be there. We'll be um <clears throat> we'll be on our on our honeymoon at SOE Live. So like I said before, anyone, you know anyone oh. who wants to say hello and congratulations and shower us with gifts and adoration, that would be that so would be acceptable. Lock is off the market and a good close second is Tobran. So <laughs> any of the ladies out there wanna throw somebody at him. And by close, we mean they're in the same, well, not the same country, but they're on the same island. Mm -hmm. They probably have some genes that are similar. All right. Probably, Let's, one, so probably all themselves. Jordash. Yeah. Probably Jordash, yeah. yeah. Maybe some Aeropostyle genes. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah, Omid could be your ring bearer. <laughs> How can he officiate and be the ring bearer and not come within 50 feet of black? Very carefully. He can roll the ring up the aisle. Just <laughs> <laughs> like he's doing crap shoot or something. Just chuck the ring up the aisle. Okay. So <laughs> Q and A time. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. We're 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 just having a great show tonight, man. I tell you what. I don't uh, know what's what the one problem. One of the all time classics. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, should we should we mention the uh, the two videos that? Oh went God, out? yeah. Let's do that. Let's hold on the Q and A time. Have we even talked about Roundtable as well? Yeah, we just did. Yeah. About the yeah where the 
Oh, the Warrior. specialty servers. Oh, the yeah. specialty servers. Okay, I'm sorry. Take the floor. I'm sorry. I forgot about oh. those. Oh. Oh, it just came back. Oh, oh. my heart hurts. <laughs> I have a feeling you've got a big rant to go on. <laughs> oh, right. I'm not going to do it. No, no, you can, oh. Omi. This is your... This, or, <laughs> yeah, like, Omi. I just called I'm you Omi. It's locked. Oh, it's it's like a chili or something. Oh, God. It's just yeah, I know. Up. He's got, like, regurgitation going on. Okay, lock. <laughs> lock. Take a breath. I'm trying. And just, just let it flow. Let yourself go slow and low. That is the tempo. Oh, I'm going back to the dark place. <laughs> okay. Um, spe speciality servers. I un I understand. I understand why the question is being asked, and I understand. I understand why people are answering in the way that they are. Especially with RP servers, like a lot of people like to role play. You know, you want to kind of protect that environment. You know, you want to you want to actively discourage people getting in the way of that, and you want to create an environment where that works. So, okay, fine. PvP servers with full open PvP. I am, as, a, as a, someone who enjoys PvP and as someone who enjoys open world PvP, I do not agree with, I, I don't think PvP servers are a good idea at all because what, like every other game, a game should be designed as, as a complete thing in itself. It should, it should have a complete set of rules that all make sense and all work together. And if you split servers and have different rule sets like that, you're basically adding or removing certain conditions from the game that then completely alter how the entire thing is played. So how can it possibly be a consistent experience like across both of those different things. Same as speciality servers, just things like people go, oh, I want a permadeath server. It's like, no, you don't. You want a game that is designed with permadeath in mind. Like you can't, you can't just take an MMO and just say it's going to be permadeath now because it alters everything about the game. Like DayZ, DayZ is permadeath, brilliant game. Minecraft is permadeath, brilliant game. But then you take you take a game, you know, a, a traditional MMO like you know, like EverQuest Two or World of Warcraft or something. You put permadeath in that, absolute and total, <laughs> total rubbish. Like it doesn't it doesn't make sense in in like any way at all. And it really it really baffles me. And I mean, I'm, I'm glad to see like the kind of clicks at the moment are saying that you know we're in. Well, I'm in I'm in the majority thinking that. Uh, but RP servers even like I feel kind of sad that. The question is, how can we help you as a player base avoid each other? How can how can we help you just completely diverge and not interact with people that play the game and, and interact with the world in different ways? Like, well, I really want. I've I've said this time and again. I've done a video about it as well. Is how can we take all different kinds of players, explorers and completionists, and the you know the the type A I want to be on the bleeding edge of progression players and the PvP players and the crafters, and the social players, and the the people that come on and play for two hours a week. How can we get all of those players together? Like, what tools can be implemented within the game that allows everyone to come together and make one coherent world, rather than you know giving us ways to avoid each other? Shouldn't the game be giving us tools that benefit interaction between those different people and create a much more compelling and rich world for us all to inhabit? And that's my rant over because I've been going on too long already. I didn't even get a chance to. <laughs> Well, I was doing the soapbox cam. That was uh, that was <laughs> that was, that was my that was my restrained restrained version. Sorry, someone's asking why doesn't it make sense? Why doesn't what makes sense? Permadeath makes perfect sense in a world with no levels to lose. Um, here's what I'm gonna say. Uh, I definitely agree with you that a game that's not designed for hardcore. Uh, can't just be automatically made hardcore, and that's that. There is. There's already a uh, hardcore mode. There's already yeah. a permadeath mode. It's called delete character. If you want to exactly. play hardcore, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Nothing's stopping you. And people go, Ah, but that's not fair. Shut up. That's not the way you're <laughs> well, If you want to delete your character, tell us how you really feel. I'm not yeah. stopping you. No one's stopping you. Or even if it, like if, if you're playing a game where you physically couldn't delete a character, make a new one. God's sake. Oh, it's not fair. No, so it's you it's want to, you want to roll a hardcore server. And <laughs> it really it really annoys me. Yeah, so I'm what are the what at it from this angle here? It's that wizardry <laughs> is basically the inverse. It is built as a hardcore game. It is built with permadeath. So making a non-permadeath version of the game is unconscionable. It just doesn't make yeah. sense. 
Exactly. Like you, you, like neurotoxin is absolutely right. If you look at it from the other direction as well, it, it it makes no sense. It's like, have you ever played survival Minecraft with the keep inventory thing? Lose like all in all interest immediately lost. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine Daisy, where if you died, you respawned with everything that you. Oh, I know. It. It's it's the game loses like, everything. Total nonsense. Yeah, and you, like absolute 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 nonsense. It'd you, be it'd be ridiculous. But then on the other hand, imagine um, Battlefield Four. Where every time you get shot, you lose everything. <laughs> you have to, you have to like go around and loot, loot guns and everything again. It'd be, it'd be insane. And anyway, yeah. like it's delete character. Strike. There's, there's. Okay, you've so, already got a permadeath. Well, mode. let me ask. I mean, before I should have asked you before you went on the rant. Could you please explain the different servers that they're talking about? Because some people yeah. might not know what what they what you sort of went on this yeah. rant about. <laughs> right. There's one with the with the round table question PvP, this week. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Hardcore with the, with permadeath and special rule sets or no specialty servers. Right. They are the five. And obviously that's you're you're the no specialty server guy. Me? No, no. no oh yeah. right. <laughs> Mr. I just I just think what I wanna see is I wanna I wanna see a system that encourages people to come together. I don't I don't want you know everything. Everything that we've said about EverQuest Next, it's all about you know bringing people together and bringing the social aspect back to the MMO. And if you start giving people different areas to go into, all you're doing is fragmenting, fragmenting the player base. And all those people with the ludicrous signatures on the forums, where it's like, I want this rule and that rule and that rule and that rule. It's like you want a different game. That's what you want. You don't. You don't want this game. And that's fine. It doesn't like it. It doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't affect me in any way, but like, just why why come into a game and say I like? Oh my god, I love this game so much. Let's make it completely really different. different. Yeah, let's add. Well, let's just tack on. Let's say okay, I want I want this game exactly, but I don't want any fast travel. It's like okay, the game is designed with travel times in mind. It's not arbitrary. They don't just like they don't just. Like throw a load of things down on, onto a giant map on the floor and go. That's where our cities will be. It's very carefully designed with like metrics in mind and you know length of play sessions and you know how they want the world to like operate. And as soon as you take out a system of travel from that, it's like well shit. You know what I mean? It was like when Guild Wars Two were coming out and everyone was like, we want mounts, we want mounts. It'll take forever to get anywhere. It's like no, they're designing the game. Without mounts, <laughs> like, right. so they've, they've worked out the travel times. It, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I've worked so much this week, and I'm about to pass out. A rant is, <laughs> no, rants are fine because obviously you're passionate about it, and I can see the passion. I just, uh, you know, I, I I think that different servers are okay. Yeah, my my answer to the hardcore server, I'd actually rather see it done more in the you know roguelike style of uh, games that have been popular these days, where yeah you die, but your next generation gets to kind of inherit some of the stuff and you know well, that's continue what's happening with Star off. Citizen. Star Citizen, uh, you put <laughs> down and when you you make your character, you put down who the person is in the will, and it could be you'd say that it's uh, my niece named Sally. Okay, is my inheritor of my estate. What mm -hmm. happens is if you die in that system, you, it's permadeath. And then the next character that shows up is a female named Sally that you can't change the name, but you can change the way she looks. And there you go. Now you're right in the game, and now you're playing that character. And then you, she has to name who the uh, person is for her. But that's the way they're building the system from the ground up. And I do agree with what Locke's saying, is that it's... It was cool. That, that, what they're doing in Star Citizen and the, rogue, and the roguelike thing. Really fun mechanic. Works really well. And mm -hmm. in terms of role-playing games, actually makes more sense than either permadeath or, you know, or a Invincible. continuous character yeah. that's just immortal. Like, it, it does. It really makes sense. But, I mean, not within the context of the type of MMO that EverQuest Next is. People are still in chat saying hardcore stuff. Just delete your character. <laughs> <laughs> just delete it. <laughs> yeah. You've already got hardcore mode. You've got Iron Man, and then the high level you get, you go, look how far I've got without dying. Look how brilliant I am everywhere. I okay. avoid all risk. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put this one out there. Planet Side Two hardcore mode yeah. wouldn't work. No, it would not. no, it would be hilarious. It would be so funny. It would not work. It would be hilarious. Would now, be now people are saying, amazing. oh, World of Warcraft has 
four different types of servers. It's like, yeah, you've got open world PvP where no one is ever flagged for PvP ever. <laughs> and even even when I have been in situations, max level character in PvP gear, flagged for PvP. See another guy who's also like exactly the same way. I go, oh my god, it's finally on open world PvP 1v1. I've been waiting this for a flying mount. I was gone. Yeah. <laughs> You'll never get him down. <laughs> and it's ridiculous because why would like why would you even and the whole like flagging thing for PvP is utterly ridiculous. Why like why would you why would you flag yourself for PvP mm -hmm. if other people could not flag themselves and go, Oh look at that guy's flag for PvP. Let's wait here and call all our friends <laughs> we'll just wait yeah, for everyone yeah. to get here and now we'll flag for PvP. And yeah, it's not a, there's no perfect system, that's for sure. It, it sounds oh, like it's a lot different oh, from... PvP servers, are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> How does that even work? Well, it's supposed to be <laughs> that, you know, the Horde hates the Alliance, and the Alliance hates the Horde, and, and you know, you role-play it out, but honestly, you're still just going to go out there and teabag somebody after you kill them. It's just... Exactly, it's, it's ridiculous, because people can RP while they're PvPing, but it puts you at a disadvantage in the same way that flagging yourself uh, for PvP puts you at a disadvantage, so no one does it. My idea of PvP RP was going on an RP server and binding a full 256 character message with every single skill ability. So whenever I would do any special attack, it would spam <laughs> chat with something. So by the time you finish fighting me, it's like this epic boss battle has happened. There's, you know, well, you say like, and now, and now Legendary Neurotoxin hits you with Smite. And then now a legendary neurotoxin. Well, no, not cast. not doing it like that, no. but saying it as as my character is. I will strike you down with the the thunderous might of Earthshock or you know whatever. Right, right, right. That's kind of funny. Trendane, what is going on with your with with you? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, yeah. what, what is sick of sick of hearing me talk. <laughs> no, I'm 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 pretty much laying down in my chair. So I can get all of this, and it's kind of squishing my throat a little bit. So, oh. uh, well, okay. you look well, a bit, uh, a bit uncomfortable, actually. It's very uncomfortable. Uh, Sean yeah. Hope said that my standard role play is quite a bit different from what role play is on most communities. I don't believe it, but I'm, I'm who, wrong. I could be wrong. Who it's is this guy in chat? Who? Hardcore players want hardcore because your way of playing games is solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> He's trolling you. Wow. Just, just, just ignore him. <laughs> All right, so let's go on. Instead of before we get starting to fight with everybody in chat, um, just delete it. Do it. Okay. Let's go on now. Let's both log into EverQuest and we'll play until we die, and then we'll delete our characters. In the right, that's gonna be what one minute. <laughs> Tops. Yeah, a It'll rat will kill you at level one. In well, let's go into dark day just come along the permadeath no. game that I play. <laughs> we'll, play till, we'll play that till we die. It'll be great. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, uh, there was two videos that came out about 15 minutes or so before we started the show, and I actually have them here. We're just going to... Um, we'll talk about them. I'll show them in the background. The first one is a video of... Uh, we finally get to see a little bit of the snowy environment which is an Everfrost pretty cool right? yeah it's just looping around and then Terry <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and Ra Rosie are like I'm sorry I can't make it stop doing that I tried for like five minutes I was like okay forget it they're just gonna <laughs> like go really fast there it's cool isn't it? I love the snowman yeah the snowman is a very cute touch Merry Christmas so there we go. Well, go ahead. You want to talk about it? Oh, no, I was going to say there, there's snowmen in Planet Side 2 right now. There's a special gold one you can get, which gives you a gold hood ornament of the snowman. Unfortunately, because of how it looks and the shape and the uh, the hat, it just looks like a Soviet poop monster. Okay. So I've been I've been trying to get that. I'm probably going to get back to that when we're done with the show. Uh. <laughs> and then uh, this was a video showing the tropical uh, biome with... Uh, the different types of textures you can add to or take from the environment. I really like this one. Uh, it shows it's showing a lot more close-ups of. Uh, is that Daxella? No, that's. No. Colette. Yeah, that's that's a rock. Yeah, the the casting animations are really cool. Yeah, and I and I like the way her hands are moving around. 
uh, when she's rotating stuff. It kind of makes me think of that like, Minority Report look. Yeah. <laughs> the, the hands and the doing the things on the screen. I, I really liked in the uh, procedural generation video um, hearing uh, Terry Michaels talk about how the world was being procedurally generated, you know, just to, to be massive and so they could keep producing new areas um, a lot quicker than they would be able to otherwise. Because, you know, we, we do, there was, there was a lot of concern from the community about areas filling up or, you know, certain areas like being, all the best areas being taken or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's looking like hopefully we'll be able to, you know, just go out and explore for a long, long way. Um, I'm hoping I got my fing- I got my little fingers crossed. Do you think that they made the day and night cycle so short so they could actually show off the cool uh, light being cast across the <laughs> terrain? Wouldn't you? I, I, I love the way if, the, the light works with the environment. It's great. If I remember correctly, during different phases of the uh, pre-launch for Planet Side Two, they would have accelerated time specifically for that purpose. So yeah, I could definitely see for you know testing purposes, potentially even all throughout Alpha. Um, having an accelerated day and night just so we can get through things a lot quicker and be able to, um, I guess, spot any weirdness or oddities and be able to report it quicker. Cool. All right, so there's the old videos. Now we can go ahead and go on to our Q&A time. Q&A time. Q&A time. <laughs> Q&A time. All right, uh, who's been... Oh God, this the- guy's still going. Let people play the way they want. You have no right to ridicule people's preference. Oh, seriously, mate. <laughs> I said, if you want to play hardcore, play hardcore. No one's stopping you. The option is there. I'm just saying. The Locked game's up. got to be designed with it in mind. If the game isn't designed with hardcore in mind, it doesn't make sense to have a server where that is a rule. If you want to play hardcore in a game that isn't designed for hardcore, you can. When you die, delete your character. If you want to play a game that is designed with permadeath in mind, awesome. Come play DayZ with me. It's brilliant. <laughs> and it's permadeath. We'll have a great time. Do you play DayZ standalone? Did you get it? Like? Yeah, I've been waiting for it for ages. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so chuffed it's come out. It's still very alpha-y. But yeah, yeah, but can, are you playing you it? See the, you can see the sort of framework of something really brilliant that's going to be, that's going to be put on top of it. Yeah, are you playing it though? I'm asking because like you could play oh, with right me. Now. <laughs> not the I'm second. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm I'm doing pretty good. I, I I've been I've done uh, n- nine hours of live streaming of it in the last two days, and so I'm a bit fried from Daisy, but I love it anyway. <laughs> it's a, it's such an addicting game. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, so questions, uh, Trendane, would you like to read the questions for tonight? Can I sit up? No. Yeah, you can you can sit up now. <laughs> okay, we've thank seen you. enough of your hat. Thank you. I really appreciate that because it's just uh, oh, that's much better. Okay, <clears throat> um, have they been linked in the? In the has anybody been linking them in the chat? Because I, I don't haven't. See them. We didn't get mm. them. <laughs> I guess, I we guess didn't Mika is yeah. not here tonight. We kind of just assumed she was. <laughs> all right, everybody. All the questions that you posted throughout the entire show, ask, ask them again. Now. Um, do it. No. No, I'll, I'll go and find some. Uh, wait, it only goes back so far. Crap. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Everybody make judicious use of your up arrow if you ask a question. Go back through your chat log, find it, and re-enter it again. All right, well, I'll start grabbing Let's some that I can see. grab. and then. Uh, okay, so I believe this one was from Chuina, if I remember correctly. And hello, Chuina. Thank you so much for coming to our show. Uh, Chuina also runs, um, or are you the moderator, I guess? The, the host, one of the hosts of uh, the Evercast show. Very, very cool uh, podcast. Oh, yeah, I love Evercast, yes. Yeah. Um, And his question was, um, where can I find the guy in the naggy hat? (laughs) (laughs) They actually already talked about it, so we really don't need to answer it. (laughs) But, um, But, yeah, at Legendary Neuro, if you want to get me, my Twitter is working now. It was unsuspended. It was uh, suspended last week because... Twitter's weird sometimes, but now it's working just fine. So hit me at Legendary Neuro, and uh, if you've got any questions or you want to, you know, blow digital farts at me, I guess that'd be a place to do it. Twitter seems like the acceptable realm. Um, let's move on to the next question. Yeah, please. So, <laughs> um, do you find ho 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 offensive? Now, for me personally, I am not a ho. 
You call me that once, twice, thrice, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> he will. I've seen him do it. <laughs> Vicious. It's just fierce. Fierce. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't find any of these questions. I People think... Uh, Rabbit Chicken MC asks, what biome are you most excited about? Anybody? Uh, foresty areas. I kind of like green stuff. I... I want to see the diversity in desert and hard chaparral and those kind of terrains because there is really a whole lot of diversity in what a desert is and what it can have in it. It isn't just this sandy, you know, lifeless place. A lot of deserts actually have a lot of awesome stuff. And they also burn all the time, but that's besides the point. And they freeze. And they freeze. That's true. I do. I like I like the more snowy one for for my initial purposes. It all it all make the most sense doing my doing my dwarfy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping I'm hoping we see more different ones. Actually, they um they said didn't uh, uh, Rosie Rappaport is that her name? Yeah, Rosie. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ro Rosie Rappaport. That had a little had a little senior moment there. Yeah, she she mentioned the uh, lava storm bio, which could be which could be a very interesting one. I'm I'm sure a lot of cool stuff will come out of that. I think so, yeah, you, I, I think you technically have to pronounce that like Macho Man, Randy Savage. I think it has to be Lava Storm. <laughs> Lava Storm. No, that's more movie announcer. Oh. Um, for myself, uh, virtually anything alpine. You know, right where you reach the the tree line and the snow line, where you go from the green to the snowy. That's one of my favorite. Love the alpines. If you look up almost any picture of Banff National Park in Canada. That is my ideal biome right there. Mm. Northeast. Gotta love it. Sharknado uh, biome. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, here's, here's an interesting question. If you could make any class you want, what would each of you make? Oh, I know exactly. Go ahead then. You go first. Oh, okay. Um, what I... Basically, I've always loved like rangers and druids. I've, anytime I've been playing D and D, I've always made started out as a, as a, as a druid and then added the ranger thing in because I've always been bothered by the fact that druids can't use bows. It just bothers me. Um, tree worshippers, so maybe bending it's not, the tree. It's, no, it's not like you you don't make a bow out of green wood anyway, so that doesn't matter. So <laughs> um, anyway, so. Uh, but you know, basically, if you could, if you had sort of a hybrid of a ranger druid style, that that's kind of my ideal thing. All it's right. mostly the shape shifting and the bow using that I really like. Mr. Locke. Hello. Um, I remember I, I said in I said in one of my videos something about a, a sumo pirate. Oh, I'll I'll go for that. <laughs> I don't. I like. Um, generally in games, I like I like sort of uh, initiator type things. I, I like things that have got like a, a charge and a stun. That's how I like to play. So I suppose I suppose something something with a leap, something something with a charge. I tend to like I tend to like heavy armor. Not warriors though. I was just saying, that heard... sounds exactly like a warrior. I know, yeah, but I tend I tend to avoid warriors because it's very it's very sort of vanilla, and I like something a bit a little bit more interesting. So I, I tend to uh, I tend to be sort of in the in the paladin -y type of mold. See, I, I, like, something I, like, I like I like I like being I like being up close. I thought you said something with a leak. <laughs> something with a leak. <laughs> oh god I, Somebody hand me the patch. Uh Tobrin. Uh probably some sort of mix up between like a ranger and a beast lord. Like I like having a pet sorry. I like having a pet, but some games just don't seem to have Rangers with a pet, and I used to be really annoyed. So if I could have like a beast lord with a mix with a ranger, it'd be totally awesome. So I can have the range DPS and the melee DPS with my awesome pet. Sounds good, Reese. The um, the lost art of geomancy. So uh, allegedly in EQ or EQ two, there had been the art of geomancy, which is of course you know being able to manipulate the earth and terrain and such itself. And so the idea that it 
was allegedly a lost art in those ones, well, bring it back. So, um, you know, being able to literally use the terrain around you as your weapon, being able to pull up giant boulders and chuck them at stuff, being able to trap things in cages of stone and then fill it with lava, stuff like that, mean stuff. I want to do necromancy uh, because uh, I loved the necromancer in EverQuest 1 compared to, like, EQ 2. And in, in, even compared to even Guild Wars, like, they have a Guild Wars 2 has a necromancer, but the pets are made of sort of like these pussy kind of glo floating globules, and it just didn't really look to me like a real necromancer type pet. Uh, in EverQuest, though, the original one, you were, like, running around with Harryhausen type of s skeletons chasing behind you, and I, I really dug it. I thought it would be cool, like, just to bring something dead up out of the ground and use it to fight for you, because it's almost like, well, it was dead to begin with, I brought it back to life enough to fight for me, so if it dies again, I really don't feel so bad, you know? But if you got, like, this cat pet that you've had forever, and it just croaks because it got eaten by something, you're like, oh, fluffy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and they have the most wonderful laugh when you bring them back too. Yeah, they kind of cackle they used to do. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, I love that. I only know that because of watching Tobin and Locke doing the drug thing. Oh, yeah. Watching them get He's slaughtered. Bring, they, they are bringing back the noise and the funk. Those two. <laughs> That's a way to put it. Um. <laughs> the noise. The noise wasn't brilliant, but the funk made up for it. Definitely yeah. much funk. You're you're, you're mentioning of. Of a, of, a, of, a, of a deer lost pet just made me think of Pet Cemetery. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, great. That'd be, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, if I could bring back a cat that was like psycho crazy, insane, and demonic, I would love it as a pet just to launch it at some rare mob. <laughs> With a catapult? Or just like oh, a sack oh, of them. You could just throw, throw them. <laughs> throw them and every once in a while their heads come off or something like that. You class crazy cat lady. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Which actually, they just get in, in WoW. I've noticed that there's some title now. Somehow you can get Crazy Cat Lady, even if you're a male character. I don't, I don't understand. I'm lost. All right, uh, next question. We got a lot of questions now, so that's good. All right. Oh, uh, oh we do. Oh, yeah. Well, um, so from EQN Knights, the question is: Thoughts of larger scale guild activities for next and landmark, i.e., what would you like to see? I could talk about this for at least two hours. That's Go ahead, don't. Lock. I mean, no. uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, Go ahead, this Lock. Is the, this is the trouble, isn't it? With uh, with so many with so many different different classes and possibilities, and we've heard about the MOBA style combat, which doesn't really scale very well. You know. Um, how are you going to get like a really big group of people to all to all be doing the same thing at the same time? It is it is something that I've I've put a lot of thought into, and it's it's difficult, really, isn't it? With like with procedural content, you know, are you really going to get a, a group of forty people together to just go out into the world and look for a dragon? I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Taser. They'll they'll do <laughs> just it. Just a taser. No, you can make them do it. You think so? The forty-man <laughs> raids cats. and stuff like that is just not going to happen, is what you're saying? I'm not saying it's it's not going to happen. I'm just wondering, like, what what types of activities we can expect if there's if it's you know uh, if the content is you know procedurally generated for the most part. You know, if we're if we're going to be going out and and looking for things to do, like what what large scale activities? You know, without without the sort of Without the Trinity system of combat, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can approach combat, but none of them, you know, no, none of the ways that we've discussed or heard about in the in the development, the early development of Quest Next so far, have really been anything that that scales in the same way. So you know, it's it's very easy, like with with a kind of MOBA style combat, five on five, brilliant, works really well. But as soon as you get really large groups together, like how do you how do you account for that, like without it becoming a real sort of a real zergy mess, which I suppose is the is the worry that everyone's got so far. So I don't know lar larger guild activities. I mean, what what I'd love is things like, you know, cast castle sieges with you know activities for smaller groups to meaningfully engage in. You know, something shorter that you know a siege that maybe last half an hour, where you have different like ways to get in simultaneously. Like you know where 
where like organization, tactical play and skill that play a larger role than, you know, just being able to get a large mass of people together. Um, but I think I think it's difficult. I think it's I think it's going to be it's going to be a real challenge uh, development while development wise, you know, even on the PVE side of it with with rallying calls like you know how rallying calls would be good. But I actually looked at this question in a completely different way. I was sort of thinking, what could the guilds themselves come up with? to do mm. large scale type things. So, That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking I mean and, and I'm I'm gonna sound a bit geeky here, but I know Trendane's in my ballpark with this. Uh, we I like to do role playing in old EverQuest and and really role play. And we would actually have like guild weddings and we'd have guild events where we all kinda got together. We'd go find some place where there's some sort of amphitheater type of setting and we'd sit around and we would do like uh, guildly monthly meetings where everyone would be in character and we would do things there and it was that was actually really fun and uh, I don't know if we can expect that sort of thing in this game I mean that we're still so far off before EverQuest next comes out but uh, but I think we could leave it up to the guilds to kind of come up with some large scale things to do within themselves well yeah but I think I think there has to be you know Content within the game, yeah. also. I mean, it's obviously I've I've done um, RP events like that before as well, and obviously, you know, Tobran will tell you that I am a, a pretty a pretty excellent um, RP oh, yeah. companion. Oh yeah, <laughs> in, in in EverQuest especially. So, uh, you know, I think as as well as guilds being able to get together and and do their own thing, which will definitely happen. But I think you know, if you if you don't have any. You know, if if SOE aren't providing any any content for for large groups to be going after, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be pretty pretty tricky. Yeah. Just 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 to sort of retain people, you know, if, if there's you know if there's if there's only sort of five five to eight man content, I think people are going to start saying very early, you know, there's you know there's nothing to do. Like, I mean, we've still got like the big thing where. <laughs> You know they they're gonna have to they're gonna have to say like we don't have you know typical MMO raids, you know they they're gonna have to come out and say to the MMO community at large like you're not going to be going to the same dungeon every night to fight the same boss over and over again, and they're gonna have to suffer the fallout from that. And if they don't, you know, if they don't have anything, it's I know it's it sounds ridiculous, it sounds awful, but like if if they don't have anything that's gonna replace that, I think there's gonna be. You know, there's going to be a bit of a backlash, and they're going to they're going to potentially lose a lot of interested mm -hmm. interested people. I I think they're going to make the world tough enough. If you go out with a team of 50 people, the world will match your scale and give you a challenge. That there will be uh, tools in place, or otherwise, the way the AIs will actually work um, will potentially you know. If there's a large group coming and a couple of things, you know, spot you and scout ahead, they'll run back and then call for reinforcements, and then you're getting surrounded by orcs. Or, you know, if you're, you know, you just go out 50 people in the world, and the, you know, you're out in the middle of the wilderness, and I don't know whatever whatever fates they build into the to the game and the server decides, okay, a dragon's gonna come for you guys. Good luck. <laughs> you know that that sort of thing, or like an iron golem, you just ac accidentally step on a switch somewhere, and it you know pops out of nowhere and starts beating the hell out of you guys. Um, that's the sort of thing I could even see. You know, it, you don't even necessarily need a guild. You can just have a every Friday night meet at the gates of X Town, group up, and we'll go and see what we do. Um, yeah. You know that sort of thing. When I think of things for a guild, I think of like a group crafting thing where I can put my crafting power on the line so when I log out or when I'm just idle or whatever in the the crafting hall somebody else can kind of borrow my expertise and borrow my uh, ability and they'll be able to either bang out the item quicker that they that they're making or utilize my skill to actually uh, improve the crafting or uh, be able to produce a better product so there's that but then also thinking about uh, for landmark not necessarily the item crafting but just building to have guilds that just get on and every Friday night it's like alright somebody put up a screenshot we voted on it that's what we're gonna do we're gonna spend the next you know four or six hours rebuilding this screenshot as terrain in the game in landmark that's definitely the sort of guild thing I'd love to see okay yeah, in, in landmark, absolutely. I, I hope that happens a lot. I hope there's a there's a lot of communal building. <coughs> It'd be right, good Mr. for. Uh, Trendane, wanna go for our next one? 
from Val Ravney. What about that question I already asked and you guys already answered? Which was the, <laughs> you know, if you could make a class, what would it be? Yeah. Um, and so. Sumo so, Pirate. It's the, uh, which, the, the question. Uh, this uh, one here, uh, do you think Landmark should remain neutral and stick to just the human race? Or would you like to see other Norathian races included or even races beyond the scope of the EverQuest franchise? Like some kind of space aliens? Yeah, Araxians. We don't die. We just come back. <laughs> <laughs> now that's um, unless we delete our characters. Yeah, we unless. <laughs> but that's uh, hardcore server. <laughs> that's that's something that I'm hoping we're going to get the tools to actually, you know, you build a character, you use a skeleton that they provide, and then you you know you rig the character to that skeleton. Then all of the animations and actions that are either built in with that skeleton or that other people have made with that skeleton will then be able to be applied to that, you know, character or race, so you can have bipedal or quadrupedal creatures that you actually spore. make and build and put into the game. Not necessarily Spore. I'm thinking this might actually have to be a little bit more technical than that. It could actually be done in the scale of Spore, but that might be more of a limited thing compared to, like, somebody actually going in Blender or Maya or 3DS Max and actually fully building a detailed character, rigging it up, and maybe even building some custom animations for it and being able to import that via Player Studio into Landmark. Because that's if, if the ultimate goal is to have the most sandboxiest of sandboxes ever, we're going to need to be able to make our own races and import them somehow. Well, this is, this is a question that I've asked many times before, and we've seen so much about the building tools of Landmark, but we know they've said there's more tools coming. Mm -hmm. So I've asked before, like, why... <clears throat> Why can't there be a 3D modeler in Landmark that we use in the same way? Like, why why is it so easy for people to accept that we can build the world and everything using tools in Landmark? But as soon as it comes to 3D modeling, people are like, oh no, you'll need to use a separate program for that. Why? Why can't you know? Why couldn't they make tools in a similar way to Landmark? That's what I'm. This is just my opinion. I, I just from my limited use of I've been doing 3D modeling for a while, but I'm not that great at it. Okay, but. Mm. Uh, Every time, say like I develop a, a slab of concrete, and my slab of concrete is different than your slab of concrete, what will have to happen is every single person that needs to see that slab of concrete will have to download my texture file mm -hmm. included in there. So now if you're talking about a new race, then every single person in the game has to download that race texture file. And then it gets to be really unwieldy. Basically, you would have to, everybody would be consistently downloading different, not just the meshes. The meshes obviously could be made by the game itself and the game engine. That's okay. But the overlying textures that go over it would be every single person would need a new one. So I'm thinking that might be what's holding him back from doing that. I mean, if you're going to use a standard wood texture, sure. If you're going to use a standard sewn texture, sure. But if, when you start getting into the custom stuff, then that might be where it causes some issues with growth like over, over time. And I think it could be solved as a claim-specific thing, that if you're trying to go into a claim or a region of claims where these races and these rules and stuff exist... Like a special server that yeah. uh, runs this particular game model that you're made, like uh, some kind of a dungeon in there or whatever, yeah, then I... Yeah, or, or even within part of one of the actual EQN, you know, landmark servers, that it's just your section and you've just been able to apply special rules when someone reaches the perimeter they'll be prompted you have to download X content in order to you know proceed and continue in this area do you accept that's, and you know uh, that's something you do in Daisy there's the main map the Chanarus map but there's also the Tiviana map and all these other maps that you'd have to download whole new sections and once you've got it and you've updated your client to be able to play that then you can play in that server the uh, Neverwinter Nights the original Neverwinter Nights uh, Persistent Worlds, a lot of those were the same way. If they had specific hack packs, you'd have to go and download them because there were special animations that people had rigged up or whatever. You know, and... Uh, yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, the next question I can see is from uh, Alice 8. Yes. EQN, more sandbox or theme park? Yes, please. Sand park? No, it's just pretty much just theme uh, sandbox. Mm -hmm. it's a theme park. <laughs> it's just a sandbox game. 
Yeah, sand, sandbox game. We we haven't we haven't heard anything anything to the contrary. It se- it seemed to sort of for a little while it became a thing to say on the forums. It was like, oh, EverQuest next. They said it was a sandbox, but it, it's looking more and more like a theme park. And then you say to people, what, what have they said? What have they said that make it? Sound? And they go, oh, it's just a feeling I have. It's just from their attitude, the way that Terry tossed his hair said said everything that needed. To. At some point, Omid is going to be drunk out of his mind, and I am going to convince him that one of the one of the the, the tagline things for uh, Le- I almost said Lexmark. No, that's a printer mm. company. Yes. Uh, for Landmark is. So sandbox, your cat will want to shit in it. <laughs> I think you could. That's a that great tagline. <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't use something like that. I don't either. I mean, no. that could be ev- everywhere in the magazines. Yeah, it's a great tagline. I think that that's perfect. I agree. All right. There, there are some you know supposedly theme park elements like you know instant content or. Fast travel, I see Diggs is uh, mentioning there in chat. Diggs. What does fast travel have uh, to do with things? Yeah, like? exactly. It, it it doesn't. There's there's things that can appear in both sandbox or theme park. I mean, this has got characters. It's going to have you know, potentially levels and an item system. You know, theme parks have those. Are you sure this isn't a theme park? It's yeah. it's you know, it's I'm hard using to my really. Keyboard and mouse to play it. <laughs> Doesn't okay. that mean it's a theme? I'm sitting here. Exactly. <laughs> a theme park with fast travel is just Disney World with a monorail. That's all it is. Mm. I've thought about this more and more. If you look at the way MMOs have gone, like World of Warcraft, like more and more is just click the button, get teleported to the content. Click the button, get teleported to yeah. the content. They might as well remove the whole game other than the two capital cities for all yeah. the difference it would make now. The, that's exactly what my wife and we have some friends here locally that we're playing WoW with. Once you hit level 15, you basically stay in an instance all the way until you hit 90. <laughs> the, the, world, the world doesn't matter. Like, yeah. So even the fact, it's weird, like even the fact that a theme park has fast travel doesn't really matter because you don't need to go anywhere in the world. You're just, you know, so you're just teleporting. So yeah. in fact, a system of fast travel is more of a sandbox implementation because you need to travel around the world. Just saying, you know. Yes, just Diggs, saying. Diggs was actually playing, guys. He says uh, that's what people say. Keyboards make it a theme park. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about trackballs? Yeah. Yeah. The right. yeah. <laughs> trackballs make it a theme park. I don't know. I think trackballs actually make it a, uh, a scientific tool or like something you'll see at a museum. Yeah. Mm, that's 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 a thumb trackball. You don't have a hardcore eight ball trackball. That's no, I don't. I don't have one of those like three thousand dollar you know scientific performance trackball. I really want one because I really want to build like a a crazy trackball thing that's going to be more awesome than this. But that'll be later down the road. That's okay. when I, nice and big. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I can't get into too much detail, otherwise you'll have to all sign NDAs, and that's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> it is a lot of paperwork for the NDA. The NDA and EA is like one page. What's the big deal? That's EA. Um, yeah. <laughs> we were going to go to... I went to lunch with my old team today. Mm-hmm. We were going to go to Espitus, which is this wonderful... Remember, Tober and I told you when you are in Las Vegas, find a Brazilian barbecue, that thing where you just yes. sit down and they just bring you swords full of meat? And you're like, can oh, I get a okay. salad? And they're like, no, get out. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> yes. That's the way it was for my 25th birthday in Las Vegas. It was my boyfriend took me out. Anyway, so we were going to go to one in up near EA today, and we called, and they said, no, we are completely booked. I'm like, you're not even open yet. They're like, we are completely booked. So we wound up going to Ant Bank, Stank House. So, yeah. Did you get meat, though? I did get meat. I got a, a fairly decent, uh, it was a braised cat's tongue, I think. No, nice. it, was, uh, it was a 12-ounce filet. Uh-huh. As it, if it isn't bacon wrapped, it's just not the same. I know. Because <laughs> that's the other thing about the uh, Brazilian barbecue. There's a lot of stuff that's bacon wrapped. It's so good. Cannot, cannot turn it down. Okay, moving on. Let's get on. Okay, right. Yeah, that way we are. Um, so, question from somebody. Um, do you think they will have just one large section of each continent be a particular biome as opposed to Minecraft where you have multiple areas in each bi- of each biome type I don't think they're going to hardcore set it up because in the video they even showed landmark where you could take the desert and turn it into snow like all you need to do is to lay down the snow texture on top of your desert landmark or desert area and then poof now it's a 
snowy biome. And then you start digging, and is it still snow underneath? It is. Mm. I kind of hope that every individual server on Landmark will each be procedurally generated of its own, that none of them are the same. They're all unique and different. Um, I think that would be awesome, because then it's really ultimate sandbox at that point. Every server is a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, no, things wouldn't be grouped up. It'd be all over the place. It'd be pretty awesome. Tolbrand? Yes. You have not said much lately. I have not. So go ahead. He's out of cocaine. Yeah, he's, like, he's not coming down off the high now. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought, but damn it. <laughs> we're, as we're talking about what do we think about the biomes. Are they all going to be one area that's a biome, or are they clumped no, together? No, I, I, I just feel like they're all going to be grouped together like Minecraft. To me, that just makes sense. Having different continents making it for hard, probably, well, not hard just to get to, but you know, you, you're not going to be close to friends, but say, oh, I want desert. You know, you can't find desert with snow together. Because they're going to be on two different islands now. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they're on the same island, that makes more sense. And of course, if you want to, you know, you can just change the landscape as we saw in an earlier video of desert to snow or whatever. So. Okay. But what about, like, how much, uh, de well, degradation is the word that's coming to mind, but how much, you know, drift will there be between the two? Are we talking like a hard edge? You're, you're about to go to Las Vegas. And when you go from New York, New York to whatever the Paris one is, or to the Luxor, you've gone from France to Egypt, like that, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, should there be, should there be um, a, a, a slow change as you go from one biome to the other? Personally, no. Really? Mm -hmm. You just want to yeah. see snow laying next to... If someone wants to build something, let them just build it. You know, maybe someone's got a crazy idea of linking two together, but someone wants snow and desert. Yeah, as I said before, but they can do that. Because they're together, but they can just change their landscape. It just looks like the ground in the desert was covered with marshmallow fluff. Like oops, it does somebody's snow in the so desert. Long. But not in like the direct sunlight blazing down and cactuses. Well, no, but I mean, it, perhaps it would be better to say you know snow and rainforest. Okay. Uh, th those. Yeah. Mm, just because it does get cold on the desert. So. There is definitely you know gradual transition from one biome to another, and it. You know, they, they've said that claims won't all necessarily be on top of each other. There will be space in between. To what extent, I don't know if they're talking like, you know, claims that aren't actually tied together, there's space in between, or if each claim will absolutely have space in between that you just have no control over. But um, if I'm building and I'm doing snow and you're doing, you know, jungle or whatever, and uh, somebody else is doing desert and it's all like, budding up on itself um, I could see how the zones in between could end up either changing on their own or otherwise just kind of being an ugly divider that separates those claims and thus separates those uh, player positioned biomes ones that are actually put in the game you know just as the server is generated I'm pretty sure we'll have some amount of gradual you know change over time and or change over uh, distance rather from one biome to another if they don't, then we can get a bunch of characters together and we can remake Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock. <laughs> Does it go from desert to, to snowy, just blizzard within a few miles? That would be perfect. Sounds great. All right, next. Next question, then. Um, okay, this question is for Locke and Tobrin. What do you especially love about your recent adventure in the original EverQuest that you would love to see carried forward into next and or landmark? <laughs> Flippy Dark Paw, there you go. Brand. Yay! Flippy Dark Paw will probably be Breath there for sure. Forever. <laughs> um, what do you especially love? I quite... It's, it, sounds, it sounds weird, but I do... I do sort of like being being a bit lost and a yes. bit yeah it takes a while for it to sink in but then you're just like i don't know what i'm doing let's just go out and explore and it's yeah. an awesome feeling so, yeah it really is it really is kind of kind of liberating after a while i do say you know I've, I've said before that i don't i don't feel like it really kind of shows you what is possible or like how to do things enough, yeah, it's just kind of like you figure it out just, yeah like just letting you saying okay there's there's the world you know, go and go and have an adventure. You know, because that's the fun part, isn't it? The discovery yeah. is the fun part, and then you know, later on comes the spreadsheets and the you know, looking things up on the wiki. Min maxing. And... 
Exactly. For that, for that first little, that first little kind of pure moment where you've got no idea what's going on and you just, you, you know, you just run around and yeah, you just, you just lose just, yourself just, in the world. It's brilliant. Yeah, just feeling, feeling like you're just, you're just in a place, you know, and and so much is, so much is possible, so much sort of potential. So yeah, I guess, I guess that'd be, that'd be mine. So, to that. And what is your perfect group size? Four, five, six, more, less? Me, I just want a boyfriend. That's all I want. That's all he wants. So, Tor- 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 on the market too, fellas. Yeah. So. Well, everybody in this chat knows where my heart truly belongs. You know, so. <laughs> I think he's married. Don't ruin this for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> just... Why well, you got to crush a man's heart? We mm-hmm. we already talked about, about after we stopped recording the last time about the rage that I felt at the end of the. Just <laughs> fucking. Uh, sorry, sorry Brian, the... I've got to, I've got to tell you. After, don't after this don't one. you do it? Yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, ten thousand is is a pretty good group size. <laughs> Build it, get a lot done uh, with ten thousand. I think odd numbers work better for some reason. Ten thousand one. Yeah. Ten thousand three. Seriously though, I think maybe like a, a seven or a five. Seven's even kind of pushing it, I think. Without the Trinity, it's really hard to say. I think of uh, grouping, you know, DC Universe Online. It's just as fun to go solo as it is to go with four people or even a larger group. Um, you know, especially if there's the content to actually accommodate it. Even though, you know, the the party in World of Warcraft was five, I'd often just make a group just for, you know, roaming around in the world, or a, a raid, rather, for roaming around in the world. And, you know, we'd be 25 strong, going through some place, ganking people left and right, because I don't know about this flag PvP stuff, but when I was playing on PvP server, it was just, you kill each other. It was a gank fest. It was bloody and brutal. And it was so much fun because uh, my Torrent Shaman engineer had every schematic and so much other stuff and all the top uh, raid gear because I was a guild leader and got all the raid points. So I was just blasting people left and right. It's a lot of fun. I don't know how open the PvP is going to be, but you know, if I'm doing open open world PvP, I don't bring two or three people. I bring a crew, and we just blast people. That's how I roll. It only burns when I PvP. <laughs> Nasty. Yeah. All right. Next. Would you oh, have do something we, to say, Trending? I I I already communicated my. my, my. Okay. Well, no, but part of actually part of what I was going to say, uh, neurotoxin covered with you know, I would not go with any group uh, number that was any variant of three just to try to avoid the the instinct of trying to form a trinity. So. Okay. Not yeah, three, not cool. six, not nine, not twelve, but you know something else. Uh, anyway, um, so some dick asks, uh, will SO emote be able to outperform face rig? Okay, well, I wonder so if you asked that. Let me uh, Trend ain't asked that, What's but that? let me let me say something. I watched the face rig video <laughs> that they put. I saw on Reddit, and it got lots of people talking about it and everything like that. It looks identical to EverQuest Two SO emote. I didn't see anything different other than the fact that the character was a little bit better of a model, obviously, than what they had in, S- in EverQuest 2. What's going to happen in, in EverQuest Next and Landmark? It's going to be way better. And I'm guessing all the characters are going to look just like uh, they do in uh, the face rig video. And I'm sorry I don't have it available. If I knew we were going to talk about this topic tonight, I could have actually got the video and shown it. But uh, basically, it looks a lot like SO Emote. They don't show the dots around the face the same way that they do with the with uh, SO emote, but it's it works the same way. You raise your eyebrows, the character's eyebrows raise. If you make a face, it makes the same face you do. And they used a fairly young girl for the thing, so that leads me to believe that they likely have similar limitations that those of us who are, you know, somewhat embearded, uh, that it might have a little Sucks bit more trouble to be tracking. You. <laughs> I don't think so, because uh, it, it, with SO emote, I did it when I still had a beard, and um, it co- it just copies the edge of your lips. So as long as your mustache is trimmed back enough, I think you'll be okay. So if I go all ZZ top, it was, it was a little bit funny with with mine, just Did with you just try with it? the top. The top yeah, a lot, a lot of a lot of the time, it thought my mouth was open for some reason. Like, so it, I'd just be there like that. 
it kind of did the same thing to me, but I was eating I was eating KFC at the time. Mm. So my hair just pop, 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 and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm just chewing, and I'm chewing with my mouth closed. Why the hell are you doing that? Shrouded Hope says in EQN all the characters are designed to take SOE remote into account, whereas EQ2 they were introduced as a new tech to an ancient game. Yeah. You you could see like when when they did the demo um, when they did the the big reveal and everything they said you know these these are the sort of emotes that we have for the characters and I, I do feel like it's going to be a kind of step forward for the technology where it will your the SOE mode will will recognize when you're making certain facial expressions but instead of tracking them perfectly it will you know it might do a, a slightly emphasized version of what you're doing already. Like that's that's kind of that's what I'd like to see. So you could kind of use your facial expressions and movement of your oh, head to maybe to yeah, maybe I mean, trigger emotes within the game. It's as gonna well. be very uh, cartoon or you know very. Um, it stylized. needs to be big. It's that's bigger. Like, yeah, when you raise your eyebrows this much, your character's gonna go much bigger. You know, it's it's gonna yeah. be a very exaggerated looks. Mhm, mm and that's good. I, you know, when when you're viewing the the world from a third person perspective like that, it it makes sense. It's like you know, it's like it's like theater versus film, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're sitting in front of a TV and you've got someone's whole face right there in front of you, you know, you can be Al Pacino, but like when you just when make you're very like, subtle faces, exactly. But when you know when you're in an amphitheater, you want you want Brian Blessed. Have you, you know, ever it's... seen the makeup that the? Uh, <laughs> have you seen the makeup that they wear uh, when they do theater? It's extremely like, like the the rouge on the, the 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 face and everything is just extreme. So they can emote better. So when they're raising their eyebrows, you can see them raise because they've got such heavy eyeshadow. It's just Frankenhooker from hell. So. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of Frankenfurter from Rocky Horror Picture Show. I, I was thinking. I, I do think I was I was thinking of it this week. You know, in um in Dota two. The, the art style it ha actually it has a lot of similarities with the whole kind of cartoony look, but the that means with what they can do with Dota 2 is they can make each different character very very unique, like through their animations and through their sort of physical being, and it doesn't all kind of merge into one sort of soup, you know, <laughs> you know, of everything of everything being very kind of like neutral, dreary colors, and you know, everything everything looking similar, so I'm, I'm really I'm really glad they've gone for the art style they have. I think it's going to work really well with the sort of overall design philosophy of the game. Yep. I honestly can't say with Face Rig one way or the other. I feel like it's one of those whatever works best works best that um, SOE mode on you know their own product might work better for face than Face Rig for this project. But maybe I'm making something on the you know Cry Engine or something that for whatever reason Face Rig integrates better. And of course SOE mode is proprietary, so I wouldn't have access for it there. But some of it might also be a factor of you know what um, <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I just saw that on the live stream. Thing. Yeah, so no, um, I, was, I was wondering <laughs> when you guys are going to see. <laughs> yeah, so the. Um, the the other thing I think about is um, you know how well the system works with the facial rigs and the animation, and that could also be the limiting factor. Is that if a SOE mode starts having issues, it might be a matter of adjusting the facial rigs, and then um, you know the it might be somewhere down the road that the facial rigs are just fine, but then SOE mode is having some issues with the new implementation. It's really hard to say. I don't work on you know either project so or face rig, so you know it's just blowing smoke out of something. It's good though. Like any any um, sort of press that face rig gets, you know, it's going to come back to you know EverQuest next and Landmark, and people are going to say, "Look at this other thing that or that already does it." So and uh, they're actually going to be using exact. I actually think they are using face rig. Uh, they license face rig for Star Citizen. Like I think what I saw when I saw them talking, Star Citizen is going to have it too. I mean, I think many, many new games that are coming out are going to take advantage of this um, yeah. <clears throat> because you have the ability to impart your expressions into a character inside of a game, and I think it's it, it works no matter even if the game's ultra realistic or cartoony, it works no matter how you look at it. You should have seen the Twitter explosion in furry circles when that freaking video went up. <laughs> furries all over the freaking world like <laughs> <laughs> oh but yeah it's God. kind of a fantasy right mm -hmm. well not mine my fantasies have nothing well uh <laughs> well, anyway uh most people most yeah, furries time. fantasies they want to live through their their character that they are wearing 
so that at least they can they can do that in that game. So it's kind of a cool uh, way to look at that. And then, of course, even if you weren't into the furry type of characters, you could go into dark elves or ogres or all these really cool characters that you obviously would be able to put all that makeup on your face every day to role play out, where you could do it in, in SOE mode and uh, in these other type of games. All right. That was a good chat about that. Mm. Are we ready to move on? Sure. Okay. Uh, so the next question, sort of, it's from Pixel Grass, and it sort of touches on a question that I had asked before about uh, flash floods and whatnot, and that is, uh, do you think they will have any physics, e.g., be able to start an avalanche? Mm. We did see the voxel farm. Well, some of us have seen the voxel farm video where uh, he goes and builds things and cuts holes out of them and watches you watch things fall off and break and stuff. So I think so. Uh, but as far as like on the land. I mean, they're built. You're digging this massive hole, and I don't see any kind of like stuff falling in as of yet. I don't think the voxels will form like cornices and things that you could that you could knock off. But right. I mean, it makes sense to me that the way that I presume the the voxel physics are going to work, that a flash flood in a gully could start on its own, as all the water from the rain, if it is actual voxel raindrops, could come down and begin to coalesce, and and it would just create a flood naturally. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's obviously something something that we want to see in that voxel farm video. We saw, you know, things falling with with physics. You know, they were they were bouncing off things and rolling and falling in, in an impressively natural sort of way. To be honest, you know, you could see there was kind of gravity at work and momentum uh, was part of it as well. So that was that was amazing. I mean, obviously taking that and putting it in an MMO space is you know it's, it's a different thing um but you know fingers crossed that I'd, I'd love to see that any anything that anything that increases the the possibility space of what we can do within landmark is is something that i got my fingers crossed for uh, so yes i hope so and possibly probably <laughs> keep your fingers crossed you too you guys anything I, nothing um if once they um, actually implement physics and stuff in Landmark, I'd love to see that translate over to Next. I have a feeling we're going to see some really nice physics in Next, but uh, I think it's going to be uh, kind of a long time in Landmark before those physics will actually be solid, especially to be able to actually, you know, form form water into uh, a, a river or some sort of running stream of some sort, or even to be able to actually have elements of erosion occur from um you know not just water and you know digging a trench in the dirt but even going beyond that and places that are like you know mountains that are sunbaked for a while that then the water starts getting into the cracks and then you know the erosion starts going on in the actual rocks and stuff uh that's that's getting even further with the physics and i'd really love to see them do that mm-hmm. but it's um you know it's just a matter of i guess how far they can get with it in landmark and how much of it they can get into next and then going from there to see uh how much more they can get in from that point on it could be really awesome it could be kept limited just so that way it can't be exploited who knows i mean someone someone could be you know like me going and tree bagging someone someone could go and try to uh you know dig something just up uh, uh, uh like a little ditch above somebody's house and then dump a bunch of water there and see if they can cause a mudslide to wash their house away or something. Uh, now, obviously, that's not going to work necessarily with the claim system unless they let you do that, but I'm thinking more in um, uh, Next necessarily, or not necessarily in Landmark, but um, just Next in general, being able to do that sort of trolling and actually like environmental trolling and doing what you can before the world heals back, basically. Maybe. Like You've just hit the point I was just going to make across, you know, Landmark is building what you want. If other people can cause a landslide or it just naturally happens and your claim's like covered in snow or they've got a <laughs> river running through or something, you're not going to enjoy that. It's more something I'd like to see in Next rather than Landmark. But of course, if you want to be able to do it, you should be able to do it. But it shouldn't naturally happen, is more what I'm getting at. That's uh, where the, the checkbox, use full physics, yes. i.e. <laughs> avalanches and flash floods, Click. Okay. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, okay. Next from Snowman Vicky. Since story bricks are going to be used, do you think uh, running around in giant hordes of players will make monsters slash enemies run away or not even appear because they know they would die? 
I'm going to drop a story brick on that giant horde. <laughs> uh, I think okay, we, good. we good. talked nice about good answer, yeah. <laughs> we talked about this a little bit last week, weren't we? And I think yeah, the but... general consensus was like it, it's the type of thing that will happen, but it, it will probably take time um, for things to sort of move away from the area that the, that the big group are in. So I don't know, it sounded like from what Mr. Dari Ari 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 said, but um, you know, it, it's not it's not the type of thing that will that will immediately happen. That seemed to be what it was what it was hinting at. But I mean, that that'd be ideal for me. You know, if uh, if players just sort of blob together and like you know tear tear across the world, like I don't I don't want to see that. That's no. <laughs> You know, not, not, not in a PVE sense. Like maybe you know, if it if it made sense in a in a PVP situation. But if you're just running around like, you know, just ripping up everything in everything in your path. 150 yeah. heavy horse just tearing through the plains. Yeah, just, yeah, I'll get out of their way. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick in chat, they were talking about the, they uh, back a few topics ago. I guess uh, will they have voice fonts? And yes, they will. They talked about they're going to have voice fonts with the uh, remote. So you, if you are playing a female character and you're not a female, you can make it sound like you are a female. Oh, uh, that kind of voice. Okay. Yeah, does this imagine yourself sound like Elf Trenda? Not everybody. Oh, yeah. Not everybody can do voices like you, Trendane. So, thank God. They're going to offer uh, the ability to sound like uh, a troll or an ogre or whatever. So anyway, back to topics. Sorry, mm -hmm. I saw it going in the chat, and it was we just got through talking about it, so I didn't want to let it get too far. Um, we know the AI will... Did anybody else have anything else they wanted to say on that last one? Okay. Um, we know the AI will recognize the actions and achievements of players. Would you like to see the AI also recognize the guilds as well? Yes. And by that I mean... Yeah, I yeah. assume they mean the guild's achievements and everything. So, like, uh, if you're a member of a guild and you walk into a town that the guild has repeatedly saved over and over again, then... They recognize you're one of the members of that guild, and they should uh, like respect you in some way. I, I could see that being a possibility. How? Yeah. Well, I mean, how do uh, they recognize you? What if uh, guild well, caves? Yeah, guild tabard. So if you don't have that tabard on, they won't recognize you if they've never seen you before. Mm -hmm. Let's say you just joined the guild and you got your tabard, you put it on, or you don't put it on. You walk into the thing now. According to the system, you're part of this guild. Are the NPCs going to recognize that if you don't have your tavern? I don't see that being completely out the, outside the realm of story bricks at all. I think they could easily put on that if the t like they uh, make a situational thing and if then statement. So if you're wearing the tavern, then they go down this tree line. If you're not, then they skip over it and move on. Because there can be two running in parallel, can't? Mm -hmm. Can't. Yeah. So they'll remember your personal contribution to whatever's happening, but then at the same time they'll they'll recognize whatever guild tabard tabard you happen to have on. So what if the two are in conflict? What if, say, you as an individual have been screwing these people over for a long time, but the guild has been doing lots and lots of good works in a particular uh, area? What Maybe, happens then? Uh, be, they will respect the guild side because that's the one they have to respect, but on the side they won't give you any kind of special breaks or something. Could have, could have different perks. Could be they do conflict. It could be that certain NPCs would, you know, respect the guild enough to overlook it, whereas others might not. Because I know that you know different different NPCs could maybe have you know different ideas about what they like and what they don't like. So maybe some NPCs could be quite nonplussed about the fact that the guild's been saving the town and really really hate the fact that you've. You know, been been doing them over for a while, so you know maybe it would it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't affect them that that you remember the guild at all. Whereas you know someone else could be the opposite way inclined and overlook your personal your personal representation because they have so much respect for the guild that you're in, yeah. or the reverse, or the reverse where the yeah. guild has been attacking the town and you've been sneaking yeah. in and secretly helping them like you are part <laughs> of the French Resistance or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They know you're a double agent. Mm. I suppose, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to speculate on. Let me see that. I see, no, what was, was the thing? I had, a, I had a note somewhere about a sort of storybrick style AI combat design. And some of the people in the audience who may be not familiar with EverQuest next uh, think that we're making this kind of stuff up, but Storybricks actually has the ability to do this very easily with inside the programming of Storybricks. 
It's just just the way the just the question way for Trundane. Well, wait a minute. I thought Locke had no. This question. You have to a, watch a, a post-it note he was looking for. <laughs> Don't worry. I it, have to watch what? Watch the stream. It's not, it's not the type the of thing that we're gonna that we're gonna get into here. I just uh, trend ends. But the the idea of the kind of the kind of if when system. I was thinking about the AI involved in in the sort so, of yeah. combat. What we were thinking about before, and I thought if you have that same type of system that Correct. tells mobs how to react within combat. <laughs> What's the hell going on? She, she wants to see the top of your hat. <laughs> Look. Uh, I will. <laughs> no, it's cut off, so all it looks is like a phallic symbol sticking straight up, yes. <laughs> For me? <laughs> yes. Please. All right, next question. As if I would ever. Um... <sighs> Where we should um, players be able to attack and kill any NPC in the game, or should certain NPCs be flagged as invulnerable? And I'm going to give my answer on this real quick. Yeah. One of the things that made Ultima Online legendary, as well as an, a legendary event which happened in Ultima Online, was when somebody killed Lord British. The assassination of Lord British. He came on really Still quick to say. Hey everybody, thanks for being in my game and they're like, Die <laughs> And they killed him on the steps of of the yeah. uh, the castle. But well, you the, know what? We're we're still talking about that that one event, that one one time that happened. Well, there's that, that event the whole but history of that game. There is a bunch of other events that have happened that are like that, like uh, the guy who's paid like eight thousand dollars of real life money to get his ship in Eve online and then they just Everyone just mm. takes it out the minute. But it again, up. again, Eve Online, another another system where really like pretty much anything is possible in that way. Like there have been mm -hmm. instances where players have got together and they've defeated you know CCP armadas and you know they've taken out stations that should not have been taken out and it was very very difficult, but it did happen. That's why they, that system should always be in there. And the, I, the, the very heist. First... That's the oh, big one. It's... I was going to say, the very first time I ever played EverQuest, the very first one, I walked up to Guard Jensen, and I wanted to ask him some question, and I literally right-clicked on him and attacked him and died. <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh, my God. <laughs> so it sh there should be that risk there that if you do something like attack a guard, you're going to yeah. either kill it or, f or die instantly. You know, or maybe within a few hits. No, any anything that sort of increases the possibility space, even if it even if it never happens in the whole lifetime of the game, if you make it theoretically possible within the game, you know, if players work out that it can be done, you will mm -hmm. get one insane person who <laughs> dedicates their entire life to making yes. it happen. And it will be a it will be an amazing event and a beautiful story that we will talk about for years and years. I mean how you know, how many times do you do you teleport into a five-man dungeon with people that you'll never speak to before, during, or ever again, mm -hmm. and run the dungeon? And the most interesting thing that happens is the tank dies once and goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn it, healer! Or the guy from Brazil rolls <laughs> need on everything. Yeah, that's the most interesting thing. A warlock rolled need on some priest gear. Yep. At level you know, One plate. At level sixty-two, like yeah. it matters. Yeah. You know, like that's you don't want. We don't. We don't want that anymore, do we? We've we've moved past that as as MMO players, surely. And I think that you know, being able, being able to kill guys not easily. You know, I don't. You know, no, it shouldn't no. be the case that just a couple of people roll in and like just decimate an entire city and all those NPCs are dead forever. But at the same time, you know, it's possibility space is very important within a sandbox. You know, you need to give those insane people goals. You know that they can go for, and it might take them a year, but they'll do it. You know, <laughs> and we'll, and we'll yeah. talk about it for years, years and years to come. We have to pick uh, it up, guys. Speed round. I was going to say rapid yeah. fire. Speed round. All right. So from Rabbit Chicken Eleven Hundred, um, where did you find those videos? I found the jungle one on David Jordanson's Twitter, oh, but I can't. Found the answer to that All right. Fine. Cool. Moving on. Yeah. From, yeah, from from Lisa Eleven D One Sixty Two. Uh, when is the next episode of Party Like It's 1999? The topographic <laughs> just asked the same uh, question. So. Pro uh, probably Monday, hopefully. I'm working so much, like you have no idea. I'm going insane. There's a lot but of it'll be, it'll be really soon. We've still got, we've still got loads in it. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I, I'm glad you enjoy it. 
Would you like to be able to control the weather on your own plot in EverQuest Next Landmark eventually? Make it rain all yeah, the time. Like every, 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 yes. I'd actually like to be able to assign um, semi-procedural or randomized fields where a certain region can have rain, a certain region can have snow, and they won't always be at the same time either, so it'll actually make it more of a unique space. What are you, Jesus Christ? <laughs> nah, his beard's a little, little more... I think wide and. No, your name is Tim the Enchanter. Tim. <laughs> there are yeah, some. some you. Tim. And finally. Mm. Oh, we're already up to a final question. I guess we didn't have to do too much of a speed round. But. Well, this question, you know, unless you want to limit it to 140 characters, if yeah, you couldn't tweet characters. this, don't answer. Yep. Um, what specialized roles do you foresee players filling in Landmark? Definitely Ooh. those similar in Dota. You've got your initiators, your carries, your oh, is this in, in other things. Landmark. Oh. Adventure, adventure, oh. and probably adventure. Yeah, adventure. But no, roles, roles is different to classes. Oh, remember. true, yeah. Okay. I think in, in roles, like... Building. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see be, um, a lot of people just being explorers, just going around, seeing everything, taking it all in, not really doing much with the crafting. People who are doing crafting, building houses, building stories, building, you know, terrain and stuff. There are people that might specifically be, you know, all I want is to make stuff that I'm eventually going to put in Player Studio. So that's all I'm doing. Nothing else. Everything's, you know, behind closed doors, behind curtains. Everything they're making is their own secret projects that they're trying somehow to uh, uh, get ready for the Narathian style so it can actually somehow make it into EverQuest next. There's going to be people that are just going to be, you know, enjoying combat and messing around with that. And there's going to be people that um, just want to be jerks. <laughs> <laughs> the big things for me, the people, that, people that can organize, people that are going to get a big group of people together to do something really special, I think that they're going to be really important. Those, you know, those guild leaders and people that can get shit done. You yeah. know, and then storytellers, when the, when the AI comes in, you know, those people that have been running D&D campaigns for 30 years and, you know, now they've got the tools to sort of visualize it in an MMO context, you know, I'm, I can't wait to go through some of the stuff that those people are going to be doing and, you know, hopefully all these people will hook up together and we'll end up with amazing content to play through made by That's really, really line. talented people. I, Modders, uh, oh my god, the Skyrim modding well, community. Well, not, not just in the modding part. The uh, the D and D aspect, I, I do a we do a Pathfinder campaign, and I would and we aren't like I don't need to build a massive castle, but sometimes I'd like to make a house and be able to start to show people what it looks like inside, and be very easy to do in Landmark. So even castles too, but that cool. later. All right, I guess that's pretty much it, right? Last of the questions. Okay, uh, so we'll go around the room real quick. Locke, tell us about your channel, all the other stuff that's going on with you. I have a channel on YouTube. Uh, it's called Lux Six Time. I do a show called The Voxel Popular, where I talk about design. Never question next. I do. I have another show called uh, Party Like It's 1999, where me and me and Tobrin do something. I haven't quite worked out what we're doing. I also have a, a EverQuest Next column on a website. What is called Zam.com. Um, so yeah, check it out. Check it. Follow check me on it, Twitter. Check it, check it out. Probably. Tobrin. Uh, I, I also have a YouTube channel called Top Brent Ironwood. Okay. Um, I'm co host on Fire Delights 1999. Host. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, basically, the host. You're the host. You know what? Just get it. Um, I have a weekly show called EQN Talk where I sum up all the news in a week in like five minutes. And oh, quickly, I'm doing a Christmas live stream on Christmas Day at 6 p.m. GMT for six hours. So wow. join me and I have what a crap ton of games to give away. Uh, we have plans for Dota, Counter Strike, uh, Quest for Mighty Loot, Just Cause to multiplayer. You know what? Just Wait, you're going to be list. playing all those games or giving them away? Both. Wow, great. Yeah. Awesome. Very well, good. can I get a copy of Dota Two? Yeah. Maybe pretty soon. Uh, I have a. I'm pretty sure I have a beta invite like, kicking around. <laughs> all right, there, Mr. Legendary Neurotoxin. Yep, that's actually, I've got my Twitter now, at Legendary Neuro, and I'll type it in chat here. Great. And um, uh, other than that, and hosting on here, and getting ready for uh, hopefully another SOE Live uh, panel, and well, I don't have to get ready soon, it's still a long ways away. Um, and the uh, the weekly concept document series this week's once again was the item history and composition. Next week is going to be uh, ancestral lineage, and that one should be kind of interesting and could be really weird, could be really awesome. 
Could be both. Could be. Could be. All right. Trendane? Everywhere. Everywhere. Trending exciting new everywhere. coming on? Uh, you got your daily dairy. I, I, my, my dear dairy is my daily vlog, um, which I was supposed to be dog sitting next week. Now it looks like I will not be doing it. So that's $300 out of my pocket. So oh, that sucks. yeah, yeah. Uh, so hopefully my father sends me money for Christmas. $5,000, please. Dad. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, dear Derry, and I will <laughs> hopefully be because uh, I was kind of counting on that week of being in a house by myself to have the quiet time to be able to record the um, story that I'm supposed to narrate for Starship Sofa in England, and I'm not going to be there now. So this is going to be a very interesting week trying to get that thing together. Mm. Why do they say not to? Uh do a Google for legend or trending rule thirty four. A great question. I don't know. Because rule uh, do, you, do you know? Do you know what rule thirty four is? Well, I know what rule thirty four is. Yeah. There's lots of furry porn out there about you know my characters and whatnot. But I mean, you know, rule thirty four is... for those who are asking basically says that uh, if there can be porn made of something, there will be porn made of something. Mm -hmm. uh, now the funny thing is, is I did do trending rule 34 and my video mo money mo problems thumbnail is the number one search for that how is that even possible <laughs> you tell us though man. i what, don't what know have, what have you been making videos of? <laughs> i don't know it's like freaking me out now hmm. i don't know but anyway time's up we have to go yeah. um what about you Oh yeah, yeah. I'm Geek Domo. Uh, of course, we do. I do. I have been slowing down a lot. I did really a lot. I just want to make a special announcement. I know that I have not made as many ramp up videos as of late. Uh, it's been mostly podcasts and live streams. It's just because I'm kind of stretched thin uh, at the moment. So uh, live casts and, and uh, these kind of streams, I can we do them right now, and then I upload them, and it's done. Whereas when I make those uh, those um, ramp up series videos, they take eight to ten hours of actual work of sitting down at the computer doing the video rendering slicing it all together and all that so it's uh, it's just outside the scope of what I can do right now I'm not saying I won't ever do them again it's just I can't do them right at this very minute so there we go um, Aquian Knights is asking what tags did I use I'm not quite sure but I'm pretty sure rule 34 was not in that uh, for that particular video all right, so we will see you all very soon next week, and in because we won't be seeing you until after Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody, and Happy Hanukkah's already passed, so I apologize for those in the audience, and Merry Kwanzaa, and uh, and Happy and, Festivus for the rest. You're of a hoe, and you're a hoe, and you're a hoe, and We're you're a hoe. And... So happy holidays, everyone. We will see you all next week on Friday. Be careless. Be careless. Mm -hmm. See ya.